let's introduce and define a couple of key kinematic quantities and then we'll introduce some very simple equations which link them together. And this will be uh, an introduction into kinematics that will allow us to build on this in a couple of future bits. So these are the quantities we're going to define. We've got displacement, which we can see here is the distance moved in a stated direction. So it's a magnitude, a distance moved, and has a direction, so it's a vector quantity. Speed is a distance per unit time. Note this is distance, not displacement. We'll have a closer look in a moment at the subtle difference between displacement and distance. Velocity is then the rate of change of displacement. So how quickly our displacement is changing, how quickly our position is changing. And then acceleration is then just the rate of change of velocity, how quickly our velocity is changing. And this velocity and acceleration are both acting in a direction and have a magnitude, and so they are also vectors. So let's have a quick look at displacement and uh, distance, and make sure we understand the difference between them, and then we can have a look at some of the equations that link these quantities together. So, let's say I'm going on a journey, and I'm starting here, and I'm going to end over here. We can see clearly our displacement is the line that joins the two dots. And this might be uh, just, for example, something like 45 degrees east of north. So if we're looking down on a surface, um, and it might be three kilometers. So along this journey, our displacement might be three kilometers going northeast. However, our distance is then looking at how far have we actually travelled. So going from this point, let's label it A, uh, to this point B, uh, we probably can't take a straight line. We might have to uh, follow a couple of paths that will take us on a slightly more roundabout way. And eventually we'll get to B. And our displacement will be the same, uh, regardless of what that path is. So we might have another path that also starts at A, and it comes all the way out here. And eventually it ends up at B again. So this red and this blue path both have the same overall displacement, the same starting and end point. And so the same overall displacement at three kilometers going northeast. Their distances will be different. So it might be that on this red path we've travelled a distance of, uh, say, six kilometres. And this blue path might have been, uh, say, five kilometres. Um, so our displacement is always just what's the, uh, as the crow flies, uh, distance, magnitude, from the starting point to the end point, and in what direction, because it's a vector. Whereas the distance is looking at um, how far have we actually travelled going along that route. And from these we can have a look at the difference between speed and velocity. Our speed going from A to B is going to be our distance divided by time, whereas our velocity is the displacement divided by time, so the change in displacement divided by time. So displacement over time. So let's say that um, the six kilometer journey took us one hour. Uh, let's go two hours. Let's say this six kilometer journey took us two hours. This five kilometer journey also took us two hours. Um, then, uh, actually, let's make that a bit different. Let's go for 1.5 hours. So we can work out what's the speed of each of these paths 
and what's the velocity of each of them. So let's start with the red one. Our speed is our distance divided by time, which is six kilometers over two hours, which gives us three kilometers per hour. On the blue path, we've now only got five kilometers. And so the speed along the blue path is five kilometers over 1.5 hours, which gives us 3.3 kilometers per hour. Now the displacement for each of these is just going to be 3 divided by the time it took. So the displacement we've gone is 3 kilometers each time. So our velocity, which we use the letter V for, is given by our change in displacement. Now we use S for displacement, S representing space, so our, like our, our spatial measurement. Um, we must take care not to confuse it with the speed that we had over here. Uh, so velocity is change in displacement over the time it took, so rate of change of displacement. And that's going to be 3 kilometers for the red line over 2 hours. And for the blue line, it's going to be 3 kilometers over 1.5 hours. So our uh, velocity along the red line is going to come out as 1.5 kilometers per hour. And along our blue line is going to come out as 2 kilometers per hour. Now velocity is a vector, so as well as these magnitudes, we've also got the direction, but we know what that is, that's easy to see. So here we've got a difference between distance and displacement. One is as the crow flies vector, the other is like counting all the steps along the way. And from those we get to the scalar quantity speed and the vector quantity velocity, which is the rate of change of displacement. And we can see we've got that first equation here. Then for the acceleration, we've just got uh, the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So we can see the equation is similar, but instead of displacement divided by time, we've got velocity divided by time. So let's clear this and run through a quick example on the acceleration. So for an acceleration, we need a change in velocity. So let's say we start off with some object at time 1, so let's have uh, t equals 0, and it's travelling to the right at 10 metres per second. And sometime later, say after 5 seconds, uh, it's still travelling right, but this time it's sped up to 30 metres per second. We can see here that if we want our acceleration is our change in velocity over our change in time, then our change in velocity here is going to be 20 meters per second. Our change in time is our 5 seconds, which gives us 4 meters per second squared. So that would be our acceleration in this case. And being a vector, it's also got a direction. We can see the velocity is increasing towards the right here, and so our acceleration is also towards the right. We could apply the same acceleration in the reverse direction for the same period of time. So let's try that. If we start again with our object at 0 seconds, traveling to the right at 10 meters per second, and we apply an acceleration towards the left at 4 meters per second squared, and we do it for five seconds. Let's see what our final velocity will be. So let's take this equation and let's rewrite it a little bit. So our delta velocity, our change in velocity, is our final velocity minus our initial velocity. So we're going to use the symbol v for our final velocity and u for our initial velocity. So you can see that's what we did here. We took our final velocity of 30, we took off 10, and that gave us a change in 20. 
Um, so in this case, it's v that we want to find. So let's write our equation. A is v minus u over t. And if we rearrange that, we get v is equal to u plus a t. You can check that yourself, but we've done that in one step there. Now we've got to take care here. Our u we've got going in one direction, and our acceleration we've got going in the, the other direction. So because they're vectors, one of them is going to take a neg negative sign, so we need to pick a direction and call that positive. So I'm going to say the right-hand direction is positive. That means our acceleration is negative. So when we substitute in our values, we've got v is equal to u, which is 10, minus 4 times 5. So our a is this minus 4. So we've done plus the minus 4 times the 5. And that's going to give us minus 10 meters per second. And we can see, because this is a minus, and we've said positive is going to the right, we know that after experiencing this acceleration for this period of time, the object is now traveling to the left at 10 meters per second. So we can see by taking care with our signs and making sure to pick a positive direction and give everything going in the positive direction a positive sign, everything going in the negative direction a negative sign, the answer by its positive or negative sign gives us the direction when we're working in 1D. So there we've got our definitions of our kinematic quantities and a quick look at two key equations linking them up, which we'll build on later.